Jordan joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline is our good friend and former BYU basketball head coach Steve Cleveland as we look ahead to Pepperdine. Coach, is there any way with your coaching hat on that BYU is overlooking Pepperdine tonight knowing that St. Mary's is looming on Saturday in a huge game? Uh, I would be really surprised if that were the case. Uh, just knowing the coaching staff and just watching these players over the last two months, uh, they, they don't seem to be in. That's not the mode or mindset they get in. I, I think they understand that every game is big, especially this time of year. And I think the thing you can't underestimate is all the upsets and all the things that can happen uh, to teams that appear to be in the NCAA tournament, and there's upsets in tournaments, so you just can't take a night off. I, I have no doubt in my mind that they'll be prepared and ready. They're at home. There'll be a big crowd, and uh, they play well at home. All the losses in league by Pepperdine, the three, three points uh, against Pacific, five points against Gonzaga on the road. That was way close, 18 points closer than BYU did, right? And uh, nine-point loss to St. Mary's. So they've competed. Um, what is it about Pepperdine that poses a threat to BYU, in your opinion? Well, well first of all, they got pretty much everybody back. And the two Edwards, you know, his brothers, uh, both are athletic and can play around the rim and uh, – Younger Cameron Edwards, he's you know he's strong and it can rebound it, and the other Edwards can shoot the three. Um, they're very consistent, and we I watched them play in that tournament last year. They had a couple of big wins before they got beat, but uh, this is a dangerous team. I, I've been talking about it being a dangerous team on the road, probably not as dangerous. I, I think that the opportunity for them to come into here, uh, just just the depth perception of the arena and not playing in big arenas sometimes can be a disadvantage for a visiting team. Colby Ross. Uh, he, he can go for 30 if you don't guard him right. You know, and I think it's important that, uh, that BYU has, you know, have full attention on Kobe Ross because he's a guy that's not afraid of the moment. He'll take big shots. He'll take shots that don't look like good shots but go in. So uh, I don't think you can sleep on Pepperdine. I, I, just, just from what they were last year in terms of how well they played at the end of the year, and they've had some close games, so – BYU will have to give them their best shot, and they're going to have to really have to going to have to guard. They can't allow Pepperdine to make shots early and get confidence because if that happens, it will be a very competitive game. But if they defend and block out and run over a 40-minute game, uh, Pepperdine won't beat them if BYU comes to play. Coach, what is the best way to defend Colby Ross? Well, I, I think first of all, in transition, you. you you know, the, where he's dangerous is in transition. And I don't know all of the schemes, but I know defensively, in defensive transition, first guy's got to get him. You've you got to get him early. And, and then you've got to push him to a side. You can't let him come down the middle of the floor and all of a sudden, you know, he breaks you down. So you can't get broken down in transition because then people have wide open shots. And, again, he's strong enough to go to the rim. And, really, transition time is where – BYU is not going to be a strong defensively. You know, with, with Yoli in there or others where there's some size, you can protect the rim. But in transition, you can. So, number one, I think you got to make sure you stop them in transition. Number two, I think you have to do different things off of ball screens. I mean, you can show hard and have the defender go under, or you can switch. That's the one thing that uh, – the BYU really enjoys the luxury of it. Basically, for the most part, they can almost go one to five and switch all screens. And, and it's not a perfect matchup when Yoli, uh, you know, would switch with him. But one to four, you probably switch one to four so you don't let him turn a corner. Because once he turns the corner and gets in it, he can take a pull-up mid-range jumper or certainly come off the screen and knock the three down. But I think transition has to be those long rebounds and they get it and go. BYU needs to be with have a hand up and contesting all shots. Aside from getting the best shooters to the line, uh, Pepperdine leads the country in free throw percentage, 81.4%. The Rock is going to play a role tonight. What's the key to having a great free throw shooting team? Well, it starts with guys who fundamentally sound. I mean, you know, there, there is a mental part of this, but, but their bigs all are, you know, they're really kind of undersized bigs. They're all guys that have played on the wing and the perimeter throughout high school. And, uh, you know, when you're a good shooter, and that that helps. And number two, just all of the repetition, and then of course doing it, uh, it when the lights are on, and when there's there's a moment that you need to make them. All of those things lend to, themselves to confidence. I think coaches play a big role in guys being good free throw shooters. They take the time in practice. They create situations where there's pressure. 
Uh, all of those things can contribute, but I think a, a big part of it is that just the repetition of it, doing it over and over and over again. Uh, certainly the Rock will, you know, they'll, they'll play a part in that, but big shooters, usually good shooters aren't really affected that much by that. I think more the the stress and the pressure of the moment of what's the score in the game and how meaningful is this basket. But they proved themselves to be pretty good free throw shooters. BYU would certainly probably have to be the toughest place for a visitor to come in and shoot free throws. But these are things you do 100 times, 200. I mean, guys are shooting 100, 200 free throws at a time. Or they don't go home until they make 10 in a row. Uh, good free throw shooters will put the time in. That doesn't just happen by accident. Steve Cleveland with us on BYU Sports Nation. Let's zoom out a little bit and look at BYU's current NCAA tournament at-large resume. In your opinion, do the Cougars have to beat everybody else on the West Coast Conference schedule, including Pepperdine tonight and St. Mary's on Saturday, besides Gonzaga, to feel confident about having a secure spot on Selection Sunday? If they beat, if they win both games this week, they're you know I think the only thing. They got. They win both games this week. They have a solid position. I think what 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 they can't do is lose to someone else. If they get beat by Gonzaga, I mean, getting that by game, the, the thing that can hurt is they lose to a St. Mary's or to a Pepperdine. They lose a game this week, and then they get beat by Gonzaga, and all of a sudden they don't get a great seed and don't get, you know, they don't get to the finals. You don't know what else is happening around the country, and that's not that's not a real positive scenario, and it's not one that I think is going to happen. But if, if they don't sweep this weekend and they get beat by Gonzaga and don't get that second seed where you get a double bye and they get beat early in a game, now they're really on the bubble. But uh, I really feel confident that uh, this is a week. They, they, they know how important this is, playing at home. Uh, they certainly had opportunities at St. Mary's. It, neither game will be easy. I think, obviously, the Saturday game will be a game that will be very tempoed out. It's going to be low scoring. And uh, but you never know. Both teams really prepared with St. Mary's and BYU. Pepperdine uh, doesn't have anything to lose, so they're, they're not going to come in here nervous or afraid of the moment. But I think there is a scenario where BYU becomes a bubble team if they don't win both these games and don't get that second seed. If they lose to St. Mary's and don't get the second seed. They they, they need to get to the finals. And, and and right now indications are they're locked in at you know. Net is 19 or 20, and all the predictions are that, hey, they're in and they're done. But you can't underestimate what can happen the last four or five weeks of a college basketball season. Yeah, Ken Palm. Get uh, up, yeah, sure, sure. Ken Palm, 19, 20, net 29. Those, those are good numbers, but you got to take care of business this week. You, you do. You do, because they're, they're going to be upset. Some people are going to get in that shouldn't have got in, and all of a sudden you start going down that pecking order and realize, wow, we, we, regardless of how good it's been, and I, and I do honestly believe they'll be in the tournament, but they could really help themselves by winning both games this week. Coach, great stuff. We appreciate the time as always. We'll be, you'll be watching with a close eye tonight. Thank you. I will. Thanks, guys. Steve Cleveland on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how.